friends, it is me. I am back on the balcony to talk to you a little bit about nailers today. Brad nailers, pin nailers, all sorts of nailers, battery operated, pneumatic. Let's get started. Okay, so before we jump into the video full speed, I wanted to talk about what these guns are used for. Pin nailers, brad nailers, and finish nailers are typically used for trim work, such as paneling, narrow trim on decorative pieces, window casings, closet moldings, quarter round pieces, or thin wood pieces that would go on a wall for decorative purposes. It's not normally used for structural or wood joinery. It lacks the strength for something like that, so if you're looking for wood joinery ideas, go ahead and click the button up in the top right that will take you to my Craig jig tutorial which is what I use for wood joinery on table bases and anything that is load bearing or weight bearing. All right so one of the questions that I get asked the most on here about nailers is what nailer should I buy? I'm a brand new woodworker and I don't know what to get and guys I had this exact same question and I had to do tons of research and figure it out and hopefully today I can make it a little easier for you to figure out what's right for you. Now I do want to throw in that you need to make sure you have the proper safety gear for anything that you're going to be doing with tools. You need goggles, you need hearing protection, and in this case I don't need a mask. If I were going to be sanding or cutting any type of lumber then I would need a mask. I'm going to link um, to my safety video here in case you guys are wondering or want links to safety gear or the stuff that I use. So you can check that out right there. So I'm going to start off by saying there are two major different types of nailers. You have a pneumatic nail Nailer, which means that you need a compressor to run it. You will need a hose to get to the nailer and that's what will give you the force and energy and power to shoot the nail. Then there are battery nailers. Now I have two battery nailers, a brad nailer like this, which is an 18 gauge nailer. And then I have a pin nailer by Ryobi and we'll get more into the differences between those in just a second. So a pneumatic nailer tends to be a little bit cheaper because they are assuming you already have the compressor. If you have to buy the compressor and the nailer, then you're getting a little higher in price. Now for me, the battery operated nailer just worked better. I needed the versatility. I didn't want to have a hose behind me. So battery operated is the route that I went. You can choose if you already have a compressor, then a pneumatic might be the way to go. Now let's talk about the different kinds of nailers. You have different gauges of nails, which is basically the size of the nail that you will be shooting into your work piece. Okay, and there is a 16 gauge, there is an 18 gauge, there is a 23 gauge. The 18 gauge and the 23 gauge are both smaller nails. The higher the number, so 23 gauge, means that it is a smaller nail. And again, I'll walk you through this in just a second. Okay, this is the DeWalt 18 gauge nailer. It is an older model. It's only the 18 volt. Right now they have a 20 volt out there. I have loved this nailer. Let's talk about the pieces here just for a second. Here's the trigger right here. And underneath the trigger towards the front, there's a little switch right here. This switch says, if I put it over here, see all these, there's multiple nails. That means that I will not have to pull the trigger every time I want to shoot a nail. I will just have to engage this part right here. That acts as the trigger and I would just have to bump to nail. If I have it over to the one nail, that means that I have to engage the trigger to shoot the nail. I always keep it there for safety purposes. I don't really trust myself and I've never had to use a piece or had to use it on a piece where I'm moving so quickly that I don't want to have to pull the trigger. So for me, I leave it right there. Next, you have the magazine. This is where your nails live. <laughs> and it's pretty easy. Here's an 18 gauge nail. These are one and a half inch nails. And the one and a half inch number tells you how long the nail is. And the 18 gauge tells you how thick the nail is. Let me pull out a pin. Okay, here's my pin nailer. I'm gonna take out this battery here and open the magazine. Here are my nails. Pull these out. Here is the difference in thicknesses. Let's see if I can get that so you can see of each nail. This is the 18 gauge. 
This is the pin, the 23 gauge. And look at that difference. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot it into some wood so you can see. Now to load the magazine on the pin nails, there are these little arrows here. And that tells you that this way is facing your trigger. That helps you so that they're so thin that they look the same almost on both sides. And the edges here are angled, which is what helps them shoot into the material. So you're gonna wanna have those arrows facing out and load them. Let's see if I can get close enough. Load them right in there and push up close your magazine. Now for the brad nails, this is a lot easier to tell which way is the front and the back of the nail, the head of the nail. That is here, this thick area, and you get these little lines to indicate. And then it's the same here with these nails. Let's see if I can get it to focus. They are angled like so, and that helps that go into the material that you're shooting into. Now again, to load these, it's the same. I'm gonna put the part that I want to engage into the material facing out, slide it up into the magazine like so, and close and lock. Now there's no battery here while I'm loading my nails. Now to engage this trigger with this pin nailer, it does have something a little different than I've seen before. You have to drop this notch here, this safety component, in order to shoot the nail. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that to engage the trigger. And there is my first pin. Now I'm gonna show you with the DeWalt. This is the Brad nail. And to engage this trigger, push down, shoot. All right, let me show you the size. Okay, I just wanna show you the sizing difference here in the nail heads. I think it's pretty incredible. So what we have here is the 23 gauge pin nail right here. You almost can't see it from far away. It's very hard to make out, which makes it really nice for trim work and art pieces where you just need a place to be, or a piece to be held in place while the glue dries. This is perfect for that. This is the 18 gauge brad nail. And as you can see, it's more substantial. It's definitely made for a little bit more strength than the pin nail. So this is normally used for trim work inside a home like molding um, or behind shelving, or if you just need a little more strength or the glue is gonna take a little longer to dry in an upright position, I definitely would go with a brad nail. I definitely, for my DIY woodworking business and for the things that I'm doing in my home, the brad nail, this substantial 18 gauge, is something that I use far more than my pin nailer. However, the pin nailer has been perfect for trim work on the outside of like console tables or like decorative things like my snowflake build or my little note board, letter board, builds or things like that decorative pieces where you want the glue to dry but you don't necessarily want to see the nail and it's a really easy nail hole to fill if you even need to sometimes the paint will <laughs> fill right in there you don't even notice it so brad nail for home diy projects for sure and building furniture and pin nail for sign work or decorative pieces that you're going for. Hopefully this helps answer some of the questions. Lastly, I wanna talk about these access areas here. If you happen to get a nail jammed in the top of your gun and it won't shoot, all nail guns come with a way for you to lift open this piece, look inside, clear the jam, close it back up. If you're gonna be doing anything like this though, make sure you're removing your battery before you load into your magazine, before you check anything here. Anything other than shooting your nailer, your battery should be out. Now, this Ryobi pin nailer actually comes with a little hex tool here, Allen wrench on the side, that allows 
allows me to open this area here and pull out any jams. I did have a lot of problems with this Ryobi when I first bought it. It was jamming almost every single project that I used it for and what I found was that I really needed to oil it up well. So I'll be doing a follow-up video a little later um, about how to fix any jams with a pin nailer and this particular model um, at another time just in case you're interested. I have never had to clear a jam with this brad nailer. Now that could be due to the size of the nail and the force that's coming out of this thing. It's very different than the pin nailer. It's easy to get these teeny tiny nails stuck in here, which makes sense. They're really small. Um, the brad nailer is much more substantial, so I've never had that problem at all. Okay, so that about wraps it up for me. That gives you all the information that I really have. Hopefully it's enough information for you to feel comfortable in purchasing a nailer and for you to know which nailer might be right for you. And I wrapped it up in perfect amount of time because the sun is slowly making its way over on my balcony to where I can't shoot video anymore. That's a really frustrating part of this. However, I will be making one other balcony builds video before we move into our new house. And then the balcony build series will be be over and I'll be starting to put together my new shop. So make sure you subscribe so you can see all the new things that I'm going to be doing in my new shop and ways that I make that process go a little smoothly for my furniture and my DIY builds. Hopefully I can figure it out. And as always, if you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Make sure you let me know and I am happy to respond. You can find me on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook and at my website, eternalharvestdecor.com. And I try to get back to you as soon as possible. So thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. I really appreciate the support that I've been met with this year. It's been actually really overwhelming and heartwarming. So I appreciate it and hopefully this was helpful. We'll see you next time.